Generation Ministries presents God's Word for Our Changing Times with Dr. Russell M. Morrow. Join Dr. Morrow for the next half hour as he shares God's message of hope, deliverance, and victory just for you.
Then won't you move? My Jesus, move. Come on and move. Jesus, I say yes. My soul says yes. Yes. I say yes. 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 Jesus, right. Like the dew, Hallelujah, Holy Spirit, gently rest. Like the dew, like the dew, like the dew, gently rest. Gently, gently, gently rest. Gently rest. Well, so Solomon gives instruction to his son. And the reason why he gives instruction to his son is because he knows that without this instruction, his son would probably end up in spiritual warfare and won't be equipped to fight the battle or win. And so he says some words to him in the third chapter of Proverbs, and we're going to focus on verse 1 to 12. But I want you to look at this passage, not so much as Solomon speaking to his children, his son, but I want you to look at this passage as someone who is on a faith journey, striving to live for Jesus, striving to make heaven your home, and I want you to look at this passage of scripture as God directly talking to you, his child. And God is saying to you, if you follow my instruction, you will experience wholeness of life. And when you have the wholeness of life that I am showing you, when you go through the spiritual battles of life, you will be able to endure and get the victory because I promised it to you. Listen to the word of the Lord. The first thing he says in verses 1 and 2, he says, My son, my children, forget not my law, but let thine heart Keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace. They shall be added to thee. That's what the wholeness of life is about. To live life, to live a long life, to live a life of peace. That's the wholeness of life. You want to live long? And let me say to you that living long is not limited to this earthen existence, but living a long life includes eternity with God. And so you may live only to be 20 years old, 30, 40, 50, but if you keep the word of God, you're going to live in eternity with God, the heavenly father. And you'll be able to live in this life with peace. No matter what they say in Massachusetts, no matter what they say in Washington, no matter what they say in California, no matter what they tell you on the job, no matter how many people they lay off, no matter how wild your children and disrespectful they may be in the older days of your life, if you keep the commandments of God, he says you will have peace and longevity. Does that sound good to you? Let's look at what this wholeness of life involves. In verses 3 
and 4, he says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. That means be loyal to the teachings of God. Be loyal to the truthfulness of God. You see, in the body of Christ, there is not a lot of loyalty to God. There's loyalty to ourselves and to the things that are important. But sometimes God is not as important as he ought to be. And therefore, we are not loyal to the word of God. We are not loyal to the truth of God and the kindness of God. But we must be loyal and faithful to the truth of God. And he says, you got to let them hang on your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart which means they got to go deep down within they've got to be a part of who you are you've got to let the word i told you i didn't want to take it for granted that you knew this and so i've got to tell you you've got to take the word of god the truth of god and be faithful to it and let it be a part of your mortal existence and then he says, because when you do that, verse 4, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You remember when Jesus was a little boy and he was in the temple and he had spoken and his mother and father came back and got him and they said, why did you leave us to stay here? And he said, I've got to be about my father's business. And the Bible says that he left with his mother and that he did what his mother said. Children, you got to do what your parents say. Jesus did it, so you ought to do it. And then the Bible said he grew in wisdom And knowledge, favor with God, and favor with man. We got to be careful when we say, I don't care what people say. I don't care what people think. You should not let people's thoughts dictate how you live, but you ought to care enough that your life is such that people will honor you and respect you for who you are. Who are you? A child of the living God. And when you got favor with God, and favor with man, then you can do something for the Lord because you have an integrity that cannot be challenged. It could be tested, but it cannot be destroyed because you are truly a child of a living God. We're talking about the wholeness of life. Yeah, we're going to go through spiritual warfare, but when you understand the wholeness of life and when you have taken the word of God and the truth of God and that has become a part of your life, you can stand in the midst of spiritual spiritual warfare verse 5 and 6 it says trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths you see a part of the wholeness of life is knowing how to make the right decisions. And what we do out of our natural instinct is to depend on our own resources of understanding and of logic and of thinking. But the Bible doesn't say that these things are bad in and of themselves. It says it's so if you don't use it in relationship to God. In other words, we must allow God's divine grace to influence our thinking, to influence our actions, to influence our activity. You ever want to know if you're walking in the will of God? You say, Lord, is your grace influencing what I'm doing? And if you can't say that the grace of God, which is the love of God, is influencing your thoughts, your actions, and your deeds, and you are outside the will of God. Think about it. Getting on the phone and gossiping, 
But we don't do that no more, do we? Talking about folk? Cheating on your income tax? Go to the store? Somebody give you $3 too much? Thank you, Jesus, for my blessing. That's right. Oh. <laughs> and you say, I'm going to keep it? Is that the grace of Jesus Christ? So we measure what we do in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct thy path. That means that that affects your prayer life. Because you're going to walk and talk with Jesus each and every day. Oh, you got to say something to him because you need his direction. Oh, Lord, as I go through the minefields of life, I need your direction to guide me so I don't blow myself to smithereens. Lord, I want to make heaven my home. You first to make sure that what I've done or what I'm doing is inspired and motivated by your grace. And then I've discovered, I've discovered over and over and over again that when you say and do things that is not motivated by the grace of God, you may not realize it when you did it. But the Holy Spirit will come. Amen. Hey, come here. Amen. Hey, hey, come here. Get that thing right. Oh, Holy Spirit. Thank you. And then you got to exercise the will to get it right. It, means, it may mean you got to apologize to somebody. It may mean you got to do something for somebody. It may mean you got to drop your pride and your ego. And oh, man, I don't want to do it. But then the Holy Spirit says, you've got the will and the ability to do it. I've shown you that you is outside of the will of God. God has showed you his desire, and now you got to do something about it. In all thy ways, acknowledge God, and you'll be able to make good decisions in life. And when you make good decisions, when you make good decisions, then you will be able to live in the wholeness of life that God wants for all of his children. Look at verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. And you know life begins with your navel because that's where life comes from. And then the marrow of the bone gives you strength. And the word of God says you can't be wise in your own eyes. You can't think you know it all. You can't think, and let me say it this way. Everybody don't think they know it all. That's the truth. Some people don't really think they know it all. But a lot of us think that what we know is the law. And that ain't right. It might work for you. But it is, may not be the best thing for everybody else concerned. And so the law says not only... Should we not be wise in our own eyes? But we've got to fear the Lord and depart from evil so that you can have a healthy life. And we could look at this a whole lot of ways. Because see, our evil thoughts and our wicked imaginations and the evil lusts of our flesh can get us in a lot of trouble. Amen. Oh, pastor. Just because I smoke a cigarette here or there. I drink a little bit. It's okay for me to take a shot of this or that or the other thing. Oh, I, I, I got to have 
my, my, my reefer and, and my crack. I, I, you know, people say, I ain't hurting nobody. Yeah, you are. You're hurting yourself. It's not evil. Yes, it is evil. Because it is not in the will of God. These things that we do, Lord, are you motivating me by your grace to kill myself, to destroy my body? The Lord gives life. He wants us to be in health and to prosper even as our soul doth prosper. And if we're going to have or experience the wholeness of life, we just have to be wise according to God's teaching of wisdom as it relates to the things we do to ourselves, the things we put in our bodies and the places we put our body in. See, I said I didn't want to take it for granted that you knew this. So I had to tell you it. And then in verse 9 and 10, he says, honor the Lord with all thy substance and with the first fruit of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. We're talking about the wholeness of life. How to be able to make it through the spiritual minefields of life. And the Lord lays it out to us in elementary terms. As somebody, as long as you can read or understand what somebody tells you, you ought to be able to grasp what the Lord has said to us. And yet folk will get into silly arguments about whether I should pay my tithes based on the net or the gross. Get real. Get real. The first fruit of your increase. Every time you get paid, you got an increase. When we open our hearts, when we open our hands, when we open our minds, when we open our eyes, when we open our ears, Jesus said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. When we open up, then the Lord could bless us and we can experience the wholeness of life. But when we clinch and we hold on, we hurt ourselves. And the Lord says, I want to bless you. I want you to be prosperous in this life. But we've got to know how to open up and give unto the Lord. And then he says in verse 11 and 12, you really need to have a teachable attitude. That's what the Lord says. If you're going to make it through the minefields of life, I'm saying to you, if you're going to make it through the minefields of life and you're going to be victorious in the spiritual warfare, you've got to have a teachable attitude. You must be able to let God teach you through the power and the presence of his Holy Ghost, through his word, through the people of God that he puts into your life, you must be teachable. Listen to what he says. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. And even as a father, the son in whom he delights. God is not satisfied with our mess. Amen. And he deals with us. And nobody may ever know how God is dealing with you. But you know. You know that God is dealing with you. And you may be so embarrassed that you don't want nobody else to know. But nevertheless, God is dealing with you in your mess.
worry, no peace, no joy, no hope. Put on a smile. But underneath the smile is a mass ball of confusion. And so the Lord puts us in these crucibles of fire. And a crucible is not a very comfortable place to be. Because when you are in a crucible, you are being molded in the heat of the fire. Your toes will get to burning. Your rump will get to burning. Your hands will get to burning. You're feeling the heat and the pressure all around you. But when you take a piece of gold or liquid gold and you put it in a crucible, it gets molded into what that crucible is. And when it's all over, it comes out in a different form, molded and made after the way the creator wants it to be made. When we go into the crucible where God corrects us and sends us through these difficulties of time and life, when we come out, we come out as God wants us to be. Lord, thank you for the crucibles of fire because they help us to be made what? Whole. There's a war going on. The war has been on all along but it's intensified now. With multimedia, 24-hour news, everything that goes on in one part of the world, you know it in less than five minutes. We are bombarded by the way we respond in this world to what's going on somewhere else. And therefore, it's always tense. It's always something brewing, something is happening, something is about to explode somewhere. And as it is in the world, so it is on our spiritual journeys. The question is, are you going to listen to the instruction of our Heavenly Father? Are you going to listen to what God says? He that hath an ear, she that hath an ear, let, let us all hear what God has to say. Let us pray.